understanding SSL and TLS involves understanding the interaction between three key players, the client, the server, and the certificate authority. In a prior lesson, I've given you formal definitions for each of these. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you exactly who does what and when within the TLS process. This will give you a high level overview of the entire SSL and TLS ecosystem. It all starts with the certificate authority. The certificate authority is the cornerstone of the entire process. The CA has its own asymmetric key pair, that is a public key and a private key. In addition, the certificate authority also has a self-signed certificate. This certificate affirms the identity of this particular certificate authority. Notice that this certificate includes the CA's public key. And the orange certificate, which identifies the orange certificate authority, is also signed in orange. That's what's meant by a self-signed certificate. And with that as the starting point, we can now introduce the server. This could be a website. This could be an SLVPN client. This could also be an SLVPN termination point. The server is anything that wants to prove its identity. And to do so, it's going to need a certificate. To get a certificate, the server is going to start by generating its own public and private key. Then the server is going to generate a CSR, or a certificate signing request. This is simply a file that is used to request an actual certificate. Inside this CSR is the server's public key. Moreover, this CSR is signed with the server's private key. This proves that the server has the correlating private key to the public key inside the CSR. This CSR will then be sent to the certificate authority. The certificate authority is then going to verify the information inside the CSR. It's going to try and validate the identity of the server and make sure the server is who they say they are. Now there's a few different ways that a CA is going to do this and we unpack all of them in the full course. Either way, once the certificate authority is content with the identity of the server, it'll then generate an actual certificate using information that was inside the CSR, namely the public key. The CA has the server's public key because it was included in the CSR that the server sent. Furthermore, this certificate is signed with the CA's private key. What this signed certificate does is it ties a particular set of asymmetric keys to a particular identity. And this identity is guaranteed by the certificate authority. This certificate is then handed back to the server. And now the server can use this to prove its identity for its clients which now lets us introduce the clients to this illustration. This client is simply an entity that wants to connect securely to the server. But before it ever connects to the server, there's something that the client already has. The client already has the CA's certificate pre-installed. This comes bundled with the various web browsers or sometimes with the operating system itself. Either way, at this point, we actually no longer need the certificate authority. Everything else that happens is simply between the client and the server. Now, the client can make a request to the server and ask for the server's certificate. Upon receiving the certificate, there are two things that the client must verify. First, the client has to validate that the certificate itself is legitimate. Certificates are just text inside of a file. How do we know that text hasn't been changed? How do we know that text hasn't simply just been typed into Notepad? The client is going to verify this by checking the signature using the CA's public key. Remember, the signature was created using the CA's private key, which means it can be verified using the CA's public key, which was included in the CA certificate that the client already has installed. The second thing that the client needs to verify is that the server is the true owner of that certificate. Remember, certificates are public knowledge. In fact, every time you connect to a new website, you are downloading that website certificate. What's stopping you from presenting somebody else's certificate in order to spoof their identity? That's the purpose of the second item right here. And the way that is validated is the client is going to make sure that the server has the matching private key to the public key that was presented in the server certificate. In theory, only the server should have the matching private key. And if the server can prove that it has the matching private key, then we know that the server is indeed the true owner of this certificate. Both of these items are validated in what's known as an SSL handshake. Within this handshake, the client and the server exchange pieces of information which allow the client to verify the two items we just discussed. The handshake also allows the client and the server to establish cryptographic symmetric keys. The outcome of a successful handshake is the agreement upon various session keys to protect bulk data transferred between the client and the server. 
one set of symmetric encryption keys to provide confidentiality, and one set of symmetric MAC keys to provide integrity and authentication. These keys effectively create a secure tunnel within which data can be transferred securely between the client and the server. These 15 or so steps are the 10,000 foot view of the full TLS and SSL process. This illustration essentially serves as a visual outline of everything that we cover in great depth in the full practical TLS course. If your job requires you to know what is happening between a web browser and a web server, or an SSL VPN client and a VPN firewall, then the content of this course is crucial to making you a successful engineer. Simply put, you won't find a better explanation of everything going on in the TLS and SSL world outside of this course. You'll get to learn cryptography, certificates, private keys, the handshake, OpenSSL, and everything you need to become an SSL expert. To learn more, check out pracnet.net slash TLS. And if you need more convincing that this is the best TLS training course, then check out the other free lesson previews on YouTube. Thank you and have a great day.